that Joe Miller always fool your gang. What's it this time, Joe? The boss told me to come clean, and here I am. This is Joe Miller broadcasting the bathing beauty contest through the courtesy of Seymour's No Peace Bathing Suit. <laughs> Joe Miller, you're a gay. <laughs> no, just half a case today. The brewery skipped its hops. Get it? Pull over, Ignatz. Okay. Okay, what? Okay, Mr. Miller. Okay. Hello, wise guy. What do you got there? A bathtub. I'll explain it to you. You turn this and water comes in. Then you get in and take a bath. Quite an invention. Try one sometime. Say, come on, get that thing up here. The train's late now. Well, it's your train. Boy! Will you have a cigar, Mr. Miller? Oh, no, thank you. Oh, have a cigar, Mr. Miller. Well, if you insist. Say, for a guy that hasn't been around much, you certainly know your ropes. Bring me a corned beef sandwich. Yes, sir. Where's that pie? Well, you see, Ma wasn't home yesterday. But I'll bring it for you tomorrow. Honest, I will. Okay, I'll give you one more chance. But remember, no pie, no driving the truck. Okay, Mr. Miller. And if it's mince pie, I'll let you work twice as hard. anyway. Like every time people start to cheer and clap on the radio, you have to turn on that phonograph. Well, you see, Pop, I'm the inventor of canned applause. One of these days, I'm going to collect them. I always, always like this gasoline fella. I think he's funny. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll print you two bits I can give you the answer to all of this crap. It's your bet. So! You better sit down because this was going to kill you. You know who was the first bookkeeper in history? Now, wait a minute, Keith. Don't rush me. That's easy. David was the first bookkeeper because he knocked Goliath off his balance. I give up, Keith. <laughs> who was the first bookkeeper? <laughs> oh, this is so silly. Eve! Because he infected the rope leaf system. <laughs> Double cross. <laughs> hey, how's about opening that bag? I happen to know there's a very special package in there for the biggest shot in town. Yeah? Who's that? Joe Miller, Burlap's gift to the ether wave. And like yourself, don't you? Like myself? Say, listen, Pop, if there were two of me, I'd put one of me on a platform and cheer them all day long. Three today. This is you pick enough? Yeah, but the stamps are still taking an awful licking. Hey, something ought to be done about you. 
Oh, yeah? Now, listen, if Ed Wynn pulled that crack, you'd say it was funny. One of these days, 40 million people will be laughing at my cracks. Now, when I get on the air, I'm... You mean when you get the air? There's your special. Oh, boy. Look at that, Pop. Look. A genuine sparkler. For a dollar down, I dollar up. Hey, I'm just full of cracks today. So is that diamond. Who's it for? Amy Witherspoon? I'm gonna propose to her tonight at a birthday party. Yeah, you couldn't support a wife. Is that so? When I start broadcasting, she'll be round-shouldered from wearing jewels. Yeah. I have your own way about it. On the level, Pop. Don't you think I'd make a swell master of ceremonies? Well, Joe, I think you're great. But don't go by me. I even like spinning. Hello, my lucky public. This is your favorite radio announcer, Joe Miller, broadcasting on a special rave length over a coast-to-coast -coast hiccup. Have you ever considered how careful we are in picking our clothes, our friends, our autos, but how careless we are about picking our teeth? Use skinless toothpicks twice a year. See your dentist twice a day. And now, folks, you will hear the tantalizing tattle of Joe Miller, the Bo Peep of Main Street, Burlap's greatest transom translator. It's been rumored along the main stem that a certain young lady celebrating her birthday this evening and a certain handsome young blade are sizzling. The young man has been solitaire shopping and their friends can start collecting orange blossoms. Hey, he means us. <laughs> the young man hasn't popped the question yet, but your announcer is taking this means of preparing the young lady for the pleasant shock. Burlap is threatened with a storm of rice and old shoes. This is Joe Miller, the man with a thousand eyes, signing off to be on the air again as soon as it's fumigated. to see somebody appreciates a good program. What, sir? I was just, uh, <laughs> just... I'm glad they all went out. Now we can listen to the radio program. Break the hookup. The connection is fine. Where's Amy? I think she's in the garden. Thanks. Of course, Caleb. I'm crazy about you. I never would have gotten up the courage to ask you, Amy, unless Joe Miller tipped off just what I had in mind. Why, there's Joe. Joe, I've just got to show you what you did for us. Yeah, I'm always doing nice things like that. Let's go into the house and tell everybody. Oh, no. No, I, I've got to get down to the station to meet number 11. She accepted you. Oh, yeah? Sure. I never seen a hang dog look like that on any single man. Well, I never even asked her. What do you think of that? From now on, I'm devoting all of my thoughts to my career. Well, you don't have to do much thinking. Speaking of your career, you better wrestle that baggage on the truck. Number 11 is due here in five minutes. Hey, 
you go again. Now what are you doing? I told you, I'm collecting applause. From now on, that's all I'm going to work for, because when they applaud you, they've got to pay you. those rails any longer, you'll have a one-track mind. I know, darling. Oh, but... Janet. <laughs> Suppose the show did lay an egg. There are other shows, and we're heading back to New York where they put them on. But when I think of having to start all over again... I know how you feel, kid. Plugging along in the chorus for a couple of years, getting a break, then having it sour on you. But there'll be other breaks. Better come in and get some sleep. I'll be in after a while. Number 11? I don't know. I didn't look at the number. Well, aren't you attached to the station? Well, I work in it, but I could never become attached to it. What time does the Philadelphia Limited arrive? Only half the time. The other half it spends departing. Do I know the answers or do I? Well, you surely <laughs> know the answers, all right. How long have you been connected with the railroad? Too long. At least we agree on that. Young man, you're fired. Try and think up an answer to that. The telegram just came in to hold number 11 for Mr. Morton. He's the president of the road. What'll I do? Well, uh, I wouldn't worry about that, Pop. Uh, Morton just drove away. I had quite a little chat with him. You didn't. Oh, didn't I? Take a look at that. Gee, Willikers. What did he say? Well, we discussed a little change that might improve the service. One thing about you, Joe, you you always did get attention. Yeah. I got plenty of attention from him, all right. As a matter of fact, as a result of my conference, I'm going to New York at once. Joe, I always knew you'd rise. Yeah, he was uh, easy to get a rise out of. I'll keep in touch with you from New York, Pop. Pretty soon you'll hear me on the radio every night. 
Joe Miller, the guy who makes the ether waves quiver with laughter. Or? Well, so long, Pop. So long, boy, and lots of luck. Say, with my cracks, you better wish those other comics luck. <laughs> Sister, I'm celebrating. In your way? No, no, it's all right. It's all right. Hey, hey, Janet! Janet, listen! <laughs> hey, I beg your pardon. It's all right. The guy's <laughs> <laughs> Will you please keep out of my coffee? Uh, I'm sorry. Here. <laughs> Have your dessert on me. <laughs> now I've got you. Let go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing there? Here. Are you in here for dinner or a sightseeing tour? No, look, I, I, I now I, just a moment. You cause enough disturbance. I'll have to ask you to leave. Listen, I've got to talk to that girl. I'm engaged to her. Oh, so that's it. Young man, I'm sorry, but my doctor won't allow me to eat pie. Thank you just the same. <laughs> What's the idea? Where's the other girl? Oh, I'm sorry. Where'd she go now? She just left. I can't eat it either. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> Jones. Is that so? When did you make the appointment? Last night. Well, that's funny. Mr. Jones has been in Europe two months. Oh, did I say Mr. Jones? I met Mr. Uh, Thomas. Mr. Thomas will be in conference all afternoon. Will you call the phonograph company and have them send over a mechanic? This machine has gone wrong again. Beatrice, don't tell me it's time for lunch. Nothing else but. You going to lunch, Helen? Yes, I'm ready. Oh, uh, call this number for the repairman. Mr. Thomas is in a hurry. Okay. Oh, uh, say, are you from the phonograph company? Yeah. Well, uh, we managed to get the machine fixed. See, what's wrong with it? It seems to be always getting out of order. Ah, uh, they play it to death and they never oil it. The motor gets stuck, that's all. Oh. Well, look, uh, let me have one of your cards, will you? I've got a machine at home that needs some work done on it. Sure. Thanks. I'll, uh, I'll give you a ring. Thank you. We 
We're doing the best we can, Mr. Burroughs, on the amount of money that you're spending. Come in. The repairman is here, Mr. Thomas. Show him the machine. Please get it fixed as soon as possible, will you? Right away. Do you realize, Mr. Burroughs, competition is keen in the radio advertising field, and we've got to compete with the big shows. I know, but you can't seem to get any worthwhile talent at all. Well, Mr. Burroughs, your appropriation won't permit any Eddie Canters or Rudy Valleys. Can't we develop some talent ourselves? Something's got to be done, and it's up to you. Hello, my lucky public. This is Joe Miller broadcasting, just a few crumbs from a wise cracker. Well, Mr. Miller, you look bright and snappy this morning. Yes, indeed. I always have a cold bath before seven. A cold bath before seven, huh? Well, that's quite a crowd. <laughs> they tell me you know all about natural history, Mr. Miller. Sure I do. What do you want to know? What kind of animals grow on vines? Gray apes. <laughs> Mr. Miller, I hear you had a fight with your girl. Yes, she wore one of those abbreviated bathing suits. And did I ball her out? And uh, what did she do when you disapproved of her bathing suit? Oh, she just laughed it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Miller, is that a Jersey cow on your farm? I don't know. I didn't look at the license plate. <laughs> Joe Miller. Never heard him. Where did you get that record? I made it. Do you know this fellow Miller? Sure. He's the best friend I've got. Well, sit down here and phone him to come over right away. I want to talk to him. You are talking to him. Say, how would you like to try out on the radio? Well, I might consider it. How much would you want a week? Well, I'm worth a thousand. I'll ask five hundred, you'll give me fifty, and to save time, I'll accept your last offer. <laughs> <laughs> On one condition. What's that? I've got to have an advance. Well, now, we're not accustomed to doing business that way, but, uh, how much do you want? A buck. <laughs> a buck. <laughs> Here you are, sir. <laughs> I want you to meet Mr. Burroughs, of the Burroughs Pancake Flour Company, who will be the sponsor on this program. Happy to meet you, Mr. Miller. And you're going to be a whole lot happier, Mr. Burroughs. You know, I like the pancake business. It's a quick turnover. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and in that connection, do you realize that a waffle is nothing but a pancake that's had smallpox? <laughs> <laughs> practically the end of the program. I depend on that. We'll bring the office. I want you to meet my program manager. Must I? Mr. Miller, what do you think we ought to do with this show? Embalm it. Is it as dead as that? Moonlit ripples on a shimmering sea. Zephyrs through the Everglades. Wafting reveries dream to me. As perfumed romance beckon. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our program. Now remember, start each day right with a hearty breakfast made from Burroughs pancake flour. Happy dreams. Happy dreams.
gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Green, I want you to meet Mr. Miller. Mr. Green is in charge of my program. How are you, Mr. Miller? Oh, I hope you liked our program. You see, we've tried to build something dignified. Well, the program's got dignity, all right. That trio nearly broke my heart. Do you think you can suggest anything better? Throw your dignity in the ash can and give your fans some zip and pep and personalities. And where are you going to find these personalities? We'll create them ourselves. I've got some ideas that'll be riots. That remains to be seen. Oh, you'll see it, all right. Here, here's a swell idea. We'll make a tie-up with one of the Broadway restaurants. I'll eat Burroughs pancakes there every night after the show. And the fans will mob the place to get Joe Miller's autograph. What do you think, Walker? Sounds great to me. No, no, I think you're on the right track. On the right track? Yes. Yeah. Say, listen, we'll make the United States so pancake conscious, they'll take the eagle off the crane and put it on a flapjack. <laughs> <laughs> It will make your troubles fly. Burroughs and cake flour Puts a certain little twinkle in your eye. A boy and girl were sweethearts and they parted one night. He called her this and called her that a terrible fight. He sent her Burroughs and cake flour Now they're on a pancake flower honeymoon. <laughs> Public. Here I am, full of thin, bigger vitality, pep, and personality, and borrow pancakes. <laughs> and now, now I'm going to find out how you feel. What's the best thing to start out the day with? Borrow pancakes. What's the best and most economical lunch you can buy? Borrow pancakes. Come on, come on, give it to me. I ask you for pep and you sound like you've got the pep. What is it that children cry for? Oh, and What is it that gives you that schoolgirl complexion? Oh, and And now, come on, gang, let's give them the yell. P-U-R-R-O-U-G-A-S. song entitled, I Put Bluing on My Blackbird. That's how I died for you. Great show, and getting better every day. And it's getting results. You should see the way my sails are moving. <laughs> The Pancake Trio, who will present a little number, Hot Off the Griddle. You put one of a trio that sang on the air each day. She was one of a million fans, stole his little old heart away. It was driving him crazy, cause she would name the day. He'd mix up work with his love all
is rather heavy this week. In fact, the lovers of this week and last week are running neck and neck. <laughs> Dear Dr. Cupid, if a girl worked for a man and he gave her a fur coat and a diamond-studded wristwatch, would you say she had done wrong? Signed, Anxious Maiden. Maybe she didn't do wrong, but she didn't do so bad either. <laughs> Yeah, but, but he uses all the same old jokes he used around here. I know all the answers. Dear, dear Dr. Cupid, was the lady I saw you out with the other night unmarried? Sign, Inquisitive. That's easy. <laughs> that was no lady, that was my wife. Dear Inquisitive, the lady I was with the other night was unmarried. Twice. <laughs> he double-crossed me. about you. I beg your pardon. There must be some mistake. Don't be silly. I think about you the first thing each morning and the last thing each night. Janet Melrose. Well, that's my name, but I don't know you. You mean to say you don't know the man you're engaged to? You're, you're the man that... That put the ring on your finger in the Pennsylvania moonlight. So you're my Prince Charming. Yeah. Do I look like you thought I would? When I first found the ring on my finger, I, I could hardly believe my eyes. <laughs> How could you doubt eyes like those? Well, where's the ring now? Well, I, uh, I left it at home. Well, after this, you see that you wear it. Uh, to whom have I the honor of being engaged? Do you mean to say you don't know my name? No. Well, haven't you guessed it? Don't tell me you're incognito. Do I look like a foreigner? Well, you must have been reading about me. I'm plastered all over that sheet. Come here, let me find it for you. There you are, that's the page. I don't see how you missed it. And you're Joe Miller? In person, not a transcription. Well, I seem to be engaged to an up-and-coming young man. Say, listen, in a couple of months, I'll show Ed he can't win, and I'll have Munchausen looking for a valley to hide himself in. I make up those gags like that. Joe Miller's very popular with you, isn't he? Sure. Well, what have you been doing these days? Well, I was working here until some guy came in and got fresh and started a rumpus that got me fired. Well, that's too bad. Uh, who was the guy? I don't know. I didn't get a look at his face, but I'd like to give him a piece of my mind. Well, don't worry. I'll bet he's plenty ashamed of himself. Well, I'm sorry, but I must be getting home. Well, why not let me take you home? No, why not? I think fiancé should get acquainted with each other. Sure. That's how people get into trouble, marrying strangers. 
You know, I take you in a taxi except for one thing. Don't tell me you're broke, too. No, it'll take longer if we walk. That lock always sticks that way. Yeah. Well, that's just about the nicest walk I ever had. I enjoyed it. Well... How's the lock on the door upstairs? Oh, it's all right. Oh. Well... Oh, don't go away. You haven't finished telling me all about yourself. Oh, well, there's really not much more to tell. The show business is pretty hard right now, unless a girl is willing to give favors. Yeah, I suppose so. And so the big bad wolf started barking and chased me right into that job at the automat. <laughs> well, all your troubles are over now. What makes you think so? Well, you've met me, haven't you? You carry your rooting section right with you, don't <laughs> you? <laughs> sure. How'd you like to be cheerleader? I don't think you need one. <laughs> Say, have you ever tried to get on the radio? Yes, but I could never even get an audition. Well, maybe if you treat me nice, I'll get you a job on my show. Well, just what does treating you nice mean? Well... It shouldn't be so hard to treat me nice, should it? I think I'll be going, Mr. Miller. Oh, now, wait a minute. I've been looking for you ever since that night I grabbed your hand in the automat. So you were... Oh, I didn't mean to cause any trouble. Honest, I didn't. I needed that job. Well, forget about it. I'll get you another one. No, thank you, Mr. Miller. I don't give favors, and I don't want any. Well, aren't you going to give your fiancé a little kiss? Oh. All right, I'll give you one. I like your cheeks. I thought you would. Here, I'll let you kiss it. You're the most conceited man I ever met. <laughs> Romance. Is uh, Miss Melrose in? Janet doesn't live here anymore. All right, all right. Never mind the gag. I got it. What? Skip it. Did she leave any forwarding address? No, she never left nothing. Ah, uh, now I know you, Mr. Miller. <sighs> Would you autograph this for me? Sure. All I need is ten more labels and I'll get your picture. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, sir. Hey, what's this, a pinch? No, that's Joe Miller. He pancakes here every night after the radio show. Oh. Thank you. 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 We'll have three nice orders of thin, crisp pancakes, and they must be made of Burroughs pancake flour. We always use Burroughs pancake flour, Mr. Miller. Tell the chef to make them as small as possible. <laughs> I've eaten so many of those pancakes, my stomach thinks I'm marooned in a wheat field. Shh, Joe, they'll hear you. Mr. Miller, would you sign my menu? Why, baby, I'll have it engraved if you want me to. What the doctor ordered? Well, oh, boy. You know what the eighth wonder of the modern world is? How about my stomach? <laughs>
fine. I located the shop where she pawned the ring, sir. The payments were overdue, but I, I redeemed it. Did you get a new address? Yes, sir. Fudge, you're sensational. Ah, oh, the poor kid. Fudge, have you ever been in love? No, sir. My duties require that I should be normal at all times. But love is quite right. My life is just one pancake after another. Well, 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 my favorite fiance. How are you, Mr. Miller? Well, is that as big as you're going to take it? I knew you were here. I couldn't miss your Pullman car out front, surrounded by your lucky public. Hello, honey. Hello. I've got a heavy date. Goodbye, Mr. Miller. Glad to have met up with you. So long. Don't do anything I would. I tried that, and I didn't like it. You know, you're not looking so hot. Thanks. Oh, I didn't mean that. I mean, you're not doing so well. Thanks again. See, why don't you take that chip off your shoulder? I've been looking for you for months. Why were you looking for me? Well, in the first place, because I like you. And in the second place? Well, me being a big shot now, they'll take anybody I want on my program. I'm quite capable of getting my own job. Oh, you're going to be stubborn and independent. You'll never get anywhere being like that. You seem to have gotten places. Well, that's different. There's only Go one... Go on and say it. There's only one Joe Miller. Well, that's right, isn't it? Well, I suppose it's something to be thankful for. Say, listen, the way we argue, you think we were married. I'm not arguing. I just don't want to be passing up. Look, when you come here because you like me, that's one thing. But coming here as a big shot to give Cinderella a job and make her indebted to you, that's something else. No, wait a minute. When I work in a radio station or any place else, I want it to be because I deserve that job. And not because I'm a friend of the managers or Joe Miller. Sweethearts and they got it one night. He called her this and called her that a terrible fight. He said her pearls and take power. Now they're on a picnic power honeymoon. Miss Bellrose is waiting for you. Well, send her in. You won't have to look her up, George. She's here. It's on the stage, Miss Bellrose. Well, this is a surprise. You should have known better than to leave these. Oh, don't be like that. Well, I am like that. He's that fat. Well, I uh, hate to take the ring back. Oh, what, uh, Mr. Green? I want you to meet uh, Miss Melrose. Mr. Green is our program manager. How do you do, Mr. Green? How do you do? Melrose. Janet Melrose. 
I remember. I saw you in Tulip Time. Yes, I played the lead. Yes. You sang, uh, now let me see. What was it? A Love is a Dream. Yes, that's it. I wondered what became of you. Won't you step into my office? I'd like to talk with you. Sit down, Miss Melrose. You see, what our show needs is a specialty singer to round out the program, to sort of give it a little more dignity. Oh, Mr. Green here is the original ding-dong dignity man from Duma. Are you at liberty now? Yes, and I'm unpatriotic enough to believe there's such a thing as too much liberty. Could you give us an audition in the morning? I don't know about this. We've got a pretty full show now. Well, we could cut a lot of it and never miss it. Well, uh... I've got to get over to kids for my pancake seance. I'll be seeing you. Is uh, Mr. Miller a friend of yours? His attitude would hardly indicate it. Do you still want to give me that audition? Absolutely. Would 10.30 be too early? I'll be here at 10. Nervous? A little. Forget about it. Do as well as you did at the audition and you'll be a hit. As Amos and Andy might say, be true to your teeth or they'll be false to you. <laughs> he certainly gets applause. More food for that conceit of you. And now, it's our pleasure to present a newcomer on this program. That charming star of the big musical comet hit, Tulip Time, Dream Lady, Sweet and Lovely, Love Taps, and a dozen others. None other than Miss Janet Melrose. <laughs> Wonderful, my dear. A very charming addition to the show. Thank you, sir. Good boy, George. I understand she was your find. No, I can't take the credit. She just more or less stumbled in. <laughs> well, don't fix the door, Sip. <laughs> Good night, Miss Melrose. Good night. So long, Joe. Good night, boss. Well, kids, you're in. Did I put you over or did I put you over? Don't you think Miss Melrose had just a little bit to do with it? Oh, sure, but I... Where'd you ever get that list of shows you introduced me with? I'd never heard of half of them. <laughs> Neither did I. Oh. Look, uh, how's about you and me over to kids for a flock of those pancakes, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I'd like to, but I have an engagement. An engagement? Janet and I are going to celebrate her success. So long, Joey. Happy pancakes. Night, Joe. Say, 
Say, you've got to do something about this fan mail of yours. Why? What's the matter with it? I'm getting writer's cramp from answering it. And I'm getting fed up with these words. Beautiful, gorgeous, wonderful, stupendous, blah, 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 blah. You know, I received 17 more proposals for you today. Can you let me see one of them? You know, I kind of get a kick out of looking at them. Hey, wait a minute. You're not going Joe Miller on us, are you? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> you know, that guy's read so many blurbs about himself, he believes them. Poor Joe. Mm, he'll be poor Joe if he doesn't quit tossing his money away on English butlers and pet houses and wild parties. He's giving another one tonight. Suppose I should go. And hear Joe talk about I, me, Joe Miller and Company. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the play, Mr. Miller. You say the word, and I'll put it on. Well, it's sooner than quicker, Silverman. I'm getting sick and tired of looking in those dumb microphones. Well, won't Burroughs give you a leave of absence for about three months? That's right, it. Johnson, I'm sitting get pictures. Offered me 50 grand for a feature. But Burroughs said no. Well, that's too bad. Daughter, Joe, the party's dying. Let's have some steps. You think we won't? And it's getting hotter. Hot diggity dog. Showing off the door. A lot of people wouldn't give him a tumble if he weren't on top. I'm fed up on this. Haven't you had enough? Yes, I think so. Suppose you call a taxi, George. I think I'd better. Hey, I've been looking for you. I got a little surprise for you. I came out to get a little air. It's marvelous out here. Nice little city, huh? Wonderful. You like it? All right. I'll buy it. There was that. That's got four carrots. Then you could have to start a soup kitchen. Here, give me a hand. Give me a hand, it's for you. No, it isn't, Joe. You don't understand, I want to marry you. Does it matter whether I want to marry you or not? Well, I certainly thought that... That any girl should jump at the opportunity of marrying Joe Miller. Isn't that it? Oh, Joe, don't you see what you're doing to yourself? Why? You're surrounded by a lot of parasites who kid you into believing that you made the people who really made you. Oh, wait a minute. I can't wait, Joe. I may never have another chance to talk to you like this. But I'd a thousand times rather have that little ring that you once put on my finger than that undignified headlight. Undignified? <laughs> I get it. What do you mean? Oh, why don't you cut out the hooey and admit that you're stuck on that guy Green? I've watched him playing up here, giving you more and more time in the show. What are you trying to do, make it a Janet Melrose program? Joe, don't be ridiculous. You're the second dame that's made a sap out of me. Well, you're going to be the last. Well, maybe that's the best thing you ever did. At least that much of your money will do some poor beggar a little good. Uncle Joe. You're worth more than a penny, baby. I'm gonna get drunk. Good and drunk. I'm gonna paint that white way so it'll look like a rainbow.
No. Say, hasn't Joe Miller shown up yet? No, and he better get here pretty quick or we're sunk. Well, congratulations. About what? I was in Walker's office when they sold Burroughs the idea of signing you up for two years. Really? Yes. Oh, George, isn't that great? <laughs> Bless you, my children. May all your offspring be tenors. Or am I too undignified? He's drunk. I'd better get Walker. No. Please don't, George. He'll come out of it, all right. Suckers, for once in your life, you're going to hear the truth. You know why I've always called you my lucky public? Because you didn't have to eat those terrible pancakes. Hey, what's the matter with him? Be ready to cut him off the air. Burroughs pancakes are fine for patching tires and half soling shoes. Stop him! Get him off the air! Pancakes. See our undertaker twice a year. Miller's gone crazy. Cut him off. Hello? Yes? Yes, he's off the air. We'll put on a record until you can resume your program. Miller, you're insane. Am I? Well, put this in your bonnet. I'm through with Burroughs. And that's that. Why, you idiot, you've torn down in one minute what it took you a year to build. And Burroughs, 20 years. So what? Oh, Joe, how could you? How could I? What do you care? You maneuvered for this break, and here it is. Here's your chance to head the program. That guy threw his ace cake around in there. Look at it. Yes. This place isn't getting the play it used to, though. No. Not since that guy that pulled off his eating stunt went off the radio. What was his name? I think it was Jim or Joe or something. I can't remember. Isn't it funny the names of those has been have slipped your mind? Yep. Well, uh, we must be getting old, Hank. <laughs> I guess so. Okay. You know, I'm getting a little worried about it. What's the matter? Is her fan mail falling off? No, no, it's not that. She, uh... She seems listless. She hasn't that zip and pep she used to have. Not a bit like her old self. Uh, oh, am I intruding? No, no, not at all, Janet. I was, I was just leaving. Uh, maybe you might see what you can do about that. Yes, I will, Mr. Walker. I'll think it over. Yes, do. Well, good night. Good yeah. night. All right. Suppose you tell me what's on your mind. Oh, it's nothing, George. I was just thinking about... Well, it's no use talking about him. He's poison around here. You mean the pancake eater? The one and only Joe Miller? You're right, George. There is only one Joe Miller. That being the case, Janet, I think there's something you ought to know. You got your break through Joe. What? Yes. He got me to put on an act for you. I never saw Tulip Time. In fact, I, I never even heard of you until... Oh, George, we've got to find him and give him another chance. It's no use, Janet. Once a star is off the air, he's through. And there's no one as far off the air as Joe. Oh, don't bother me. I'll have the rent tomorrow. Hello, Joe. 
Well, aren't you going to ask me in? Well, sure. Sure, Janet, come on in. Gee, you're, you're looking swell. Won't you sit down? Thanks. Certainly good to see you again, Joe. How have you been? Well, I'm not exactly living at the Waldorf, but everything's going to be all right. Of course it is. There's only one Joe Miller. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you and a lot of people are glad about that. I didn't mean it that way. I want to help you, Joe. No. No, thanks. I don't need any help. But you helped me. George told me about it. I wish that dignified sap had learned to keep his trap shut. Joe. Oh, can't you see what it means to have you come and find me in a dump like this? I'm a mess I made of everything, but I don't want any help from anybody. I understand, Joe. this is all about. You got me. Janet and Green insist upon our being here tonight. Where you going? Get out of my way. What's the idea of pulling this stuff? Joke. I may be off the air and down and out, but I don't need any charity from you or anybody else. Look. Joe Miller. It's Joe Miller. It is Joe Miller. Joe Miller. Joe Miller. that you've just heard is for an old friend who dropped into the studio. And I'm sure that you'd all like to hear a word from the one and only Joe Miller. He'll ruin us. I'll stop the show. Wait. Hello. My lucky public. <laughs> Believe it or not, for once, the talkative Joe Miller can't think of a thing to say. I want to make a public apology to the millions of fans who've made me for acting like a sap. Your ovation was worthy of a great star. We all know that there's only one... Janet Melrose. Oh, I'm so glad to get us back again, Joe. Hey, it's a very good performance. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Burroughs, 
I'm sorry I broke up your program again. Honest, this time it was an accident. An accident? The luckiest accident we ever had. Why, your lucky public is calling the studio by the hundreds, asking when Joe Miller's coming back on the air. Do you think you could stomach my pancakes again? Well, the question is, could you stomach me again? <laughs> now, there's a question of money. Oh, I guess we can get together on that, all right. Only there's one condition. I've got to have an advance. Well, now, uh, how much do you want? Two bucks. The price of a license. Say, I got an idea. You can start blooming my new waffle flower. When you go into a restaurant, you can eat waffle. Well, you better make that advance 280. <laughs>